the ladies and gents, another episode of Coin News Extra TV interview session, a beautiful program where we invite innovators, stakeholders, influencers in the blockchain, crypto and fintech ecosystem to come add their view and the state of the ecosystem. Today we are talking about the future of blockchain, the payment sector. Uh, I have with me an amazing innovator joining us uh, from Dublin Island, in the person of Jonathan Emmanuel, who is the CEO and co-founder Zenith Chain. You are welcome, Emmanuel. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. How is our uh, Dublin today? Good. Great. Okay, is uh, this whole job blockchain in the payment uh, sector? So we've seen a lot of, most especially in Africa, when it comes to payment, there are a lot of uh, challenges facing this uh, particular sector. And we see that our volumes are coming up from Africa when it comes to our payment and remittance, and especially our, our people in diaspora, they always send the money back uh, to Africa or wherever for businesses, uh, school fees and all the rest of them. But uh, this has really uh, faced a lot of challenges. So we're going to be looking at to see what blockchain is doing, not only in the finance sector, but across different sectors. So we're looking at what is the uh, in the payment sector. So before we delve into that discussion proper, I would like to get a brief about you, Jonathan. Uh, just a brief about you and your background. Okay. Imano, founder and CEO. Ground, I was a developer, full stack developer, and uh, I ran my own tech company that was connecting um, developers, full stack developers, companies in the US to develop enterprise software and all. Um, Zeni Chain, uh, the idea of Zeni Chain, we started around uh, 2021 uh, when there was this bull run of Ethereum and all crypto in general. And then the guys' fee of Ethereum, everyone would say it just skyrocketed just like that. So um, I thought to myself, of course, crypto, Web3, finance in general is going to be the um, future of uh, payments. And uh, with a gas fee like that on Ethereum, it's not going to be feasible in in the next uh, 10 years or 20 years to come. So we thought to ourselves to build a blockchain that will solve the two main issues that Ethereum currently solve, uh, face, which is gas fee and uh, hybrid chain, because we took the best part of uh, private blockchain and the best part of a public blockchain you know, private blockchain like XRP, Stellar, and Co, they have this um, pro of processing tra transaction very fast, number one, and also with a very cheap gas fee. But they have their own limitation, which is, is private. It's not open source. Nobody can, can build on it. And for public, like, like okay, I said, uh, Jonathan, I, I know. Uh, I know we'll be getting to that uh, <laughs> stage. Uh, uh, let's, uh, uh, sorry to no cut you short there. I know we'll get to that stage. Uh, let's uh, look at uh, what are some of the challenges uh, face, facing the payment sector, uh, most especially in- uh, Okay, I would say regulation. Um, you can wake up one morning, something is banned, the next morning it's open. So regulation is a major issue facing fintechs in general in Africa. And uh, if there can be a good regulatory framework that will guide fintechs and payments apps on how to operate and how to, uh, you know, creating that enabling environment for fintechs and payment apps to operate, I think we should be seeing a lot of Africa, Nigeria, for example. Okay, interesting. Let's uh, look at uh, what do you think we see a lot of discussion. Uh, some people say that a lot of hype around the blockchain technology how do you think uh, blockchain is going to play a role in solving some of the challenges uh, facing our payments, not only in Africa, around the world? Okay, um, I see it's uh, centralization because everyone wants their money and uh, everyone wants to have a say in their money. You shouldn't have to uh, make a transfer from here to the UK. You know, it should be as simple as opening a wallet, getting the wallet ID and making that payment. So blockchain is really going to solve that part of centralization. And another part is speed, you know, pro, uh, speed, number of transactions you can process in a minute. There are a lot of blockchains out there right now that are process 
higher transactions than even MasterCard and Visa put together. So those are the two parts I see blockchain solving. Okay, interesting. You know, our blockchain technology, a lot have been said about what is actually doing in the finance sector with cryptocurrency. Uh, we see the speed of transaction. We see uh, the transparency of the uh, ecosystem, transparency of a blockchain network, and a lot of things going really uh, play an amazing role in the payment sector. And I'm glad you said that. Uh, so blockchain will look uh, to see what it's going to contribute in the payment sector. Yeah, I was asking, you know, you said earlier on about uh, Ethereum uh, challenges facing Ethereum uh, net blockchain network, the high, high gas fees and all the rest of them. Uh, your, uh, those were the reasons where, why you looked at as I said. So let's look at the reasons that led to our founding of uh, Zenith. Um, I think those were the two main region, uh, main reasons, not just the transaction fee, but, but the speed. The speed really matters. Um, I think Ethereum right now is limited to around 21 transactions per second, and that is really low. So that's why, of course, there are other blockchains out there, not just any chain that can process way higher than that. Take example Solana. Solana can process up to 10,000, and at some points, up to 68,000 transactions per second. So um, I think that is where uh, uh, payments are leading to. Ethereum. Yes, Ethereum is the father of everything. It's to be, uh, it was the beginning of open source development, but um, for transaction speed, that's where I see us coming in. Okay. Are you still with me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, are you done speaking? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, um, looking at uh, the this, I uh, look at the future. Uh, let's look at the future of payment trade. Uh, how do you see the future with uh, blockchain technology? Do you think a blockchain technology is going to stand the test of mm, time? Of course, yes. I mean, this kind of questions were asked when the internet started in 1980 something. So, of course, blockchain will become the future. I so much believe in that because, I mean, it's decentralized. Everybody can see the ledger. That is what everyone wants. And uh, of course, um, any new technology is always prone to a lot of problems, like the problems of hacking, problems of uh, bridge, scams, and all of that. Uh, in the long run, I see blockchain being able to solve all those problems. Um, though a lot of crypto coins will go out of book. Not, none of them, no, no, not all of them will survive, but I see a lot surviving and I see blockchain hosting a lot of um, P2P applications, you know, payment, peer-to-peer -peer payments applications, because that's what everyone wants. I want to be able to have an application like PayPal on the blockchain where I'm able to transact um, uh, digitalized dollar, digitalized euro. I see that happening. Okay, interesting. Uh, just uh, one more question before we draw the curtain on today's episode of Coin is a strategic interview session. Uh, so we're talking about the future of blockchain in the payment sector. Let's uh, look at the future of Zenith Chain. How do you see the future as the founder? Okay, as founder, I see Zenith Chain as a technology in Africa and uh, the Pacific Asia region in general. Um, what we've noticed that uh, Throughout this um, blockchain, Bitcoin, crypto bubble, Africa has been left out, even though um, Nigeria is really participating and contributing a lot when it comes to Bitcoin adoption in Africa. If you look at the stats out there, Nigeria is like the second largest market when it comes to P2P. So I see preferring that online technology for entrepreneurs, for innovators to build um, Web3 applications, and uh, we're, we're always open to support systems that can support these entrepreneurs and innovators from Africa. We've created um, a decentralized uh, ecosystem that hosts NFT marketplace, CX, Tex, and a whole lot of other things, and also a fast blockchain. And then we've gone ahead to also create an incubation program where we help these entrepreneurs from their seed investments up to them uh, reaching their users.
Yeah. Are you, are you done? Oh, so sorry. Uh, oh, cool. Thank you very much. Um, um, before we draw the curtain, just to, uh, in, in one minute, uh, your closing remarks. Okay. Um, my closing remarks, I would say, uh, let's go out there and continue contributing to the adoption, full adoption of blockchain because it's still an early technology. We should um, go out there and continue contributing. And again, uh, in terms of investing in crypto and ICOs and all, I would say everyone should do their due diligence very well because there are a lot of scams out there right now. And uh, yeah, in general, that's all. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. That message is a very uh, good one there. Uh, is, uh, due diligence, doing your due diligence is very, very important in the uh, blockchain and crypto ecosystem because it's still stage. So a lot of things are happening. And that's why you always uh, do your due diligence. Uh, the information you see will help you, but always do your own due diligence. Thank you very much, Jonathan Emmanuel, CEO, founder, Zim Chain, uh, for joining us on today's uh, edition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Okay, we are done with the interview. Uh, so, so thank you.